Thank you for participating in this project. Mercury is all around us, and your contribution will help all of us better understand how Mercury moves through the environment and understand the risk of Mercury to national park ecosystems. To collect samples that don't get contaminated means following protocols and keeping everything ultra clean. This video supports the sampling guide for the collection of dragonfly larvae, water and sediment samples from national parks for mercury analysis. You can download a copy of the guide at the website on the screen. Read the guide to make sure you have enough time for your participants to collect everything. You will be collecting water, sediment, and dragonfly larvae samples and submitting the samples for mercury analysis unless otherwise noted by the project coordinator. Field sampling is fun. Take pictures, be safe, make observations, record the event, but for sampling be sure to follow the protocol. This sediment sampling video is split into equipment, when to sample, where to sample, how to sample, and storage and shipment of your sample. When you have arranged to participate in the Dragonfly project, you will receive a field collection kit. Keep everything stored in a safe, clean area until you are ready to sample. For sediment sampling, you will need, from the gear sent to you, three mini corer tubes pre-bagged to keep clean, with two end caps and one depth washer per tube. These will arrive with the top cap already on the mini corers zipper bags in which to place sample tubes for storage and shipping, powder-free nitrile gloves, blue or purple color, scoops for the alternate protocol, Teflon tape and parafilm, field data sheet, a cooler, a Sharpie marker. You will need to provide bagged ice, trash bag, waders or boots, and your citizen scientists who are going into the water must have personal flotation devices. If you decide to collect this sample on a separate day, with fewer citizen scientists, just make sure to collect within two weeks before or after when the dragonflies are collected. Do your best to schedule sampling during consistent weather conditions, as this will reduce uncertainty when interpreting results. If you are collecting all three sample types on one day, water, sediment, dragonflies, collect the sediment after the water sampling is complete but before your group gets into the water to sample for dragonfly larvae. Sediment is the mud, sand, dead plants, rocks, or other materials that settle to the bottom of a lake or wetland, or slow-moving section of a stream or river. Look at the bottom of the water body you are sampling. Is most of the bottom mucky, rocky, sandy? Are there plants everywhere? Make a note on your field sheet about the sediment types you see and the relative coverage of each type. Be careful not to stir up the sediment as you look around. If your site is all ledge and rock, you will have to collect from the closest location in the stream or lake with a sediment type that can be collected with the equipment sent to you. If it's hard to see underwater and if you have one available, you can put on a set of swim goggles to see underwater, or make a cheap and easy version by wrapping clear plastic wrap around the end of an empty cardboard toilet paper or paper towel roll with an elastic band. If someone wades right in before collecting their sample, then the area will be disturbed. So move a bit upstream, or wade far out enough to avoid the disturbed area, or return another day. This sampling procedure will take two people. Both put on purple nitrile gloves. One person will collect the sample. The other person will hand the sampler the end cap when the time comes and will hold open the sample bag. Where you will be collecting the sediment, the person collecting takes one pre-cleaned sampling tube or mini corer and presses it about two centimeters into the sediment surface at the spot you picked. Your mini corer should have a line marking the depth to collect to. Use the depth washer as a marker so that you do not push your corer too deep. Once the mini corer has been plunged two centimeters into the sediment, the other gloved person hands the sampler an end cap. The sampler puts the end cap on the bottom of the tube. Alternately, once the mini corer has been plunged two centimeters into the sediment, the person collecting the sample covers the hole drilled in the side of the mini corer and slowly removes the corer with the sample from the sediment. The other gloved person hands the sampler an end cap. The sampler puts the end cap on the bottom of the tube. The sampler slowly removes the top cap 
and then their thumb from the side hole to allow water to drain through the hole drilled. Removing the top cap may jostle the sample, disturbing the sediment and the water that lies right on top of it. You may want to practice coring, removing the top, and letting the water drain out before collecting your samples. We want to keep the sediment core intact, and we want the water that's right on top of the sediment. This is an important part of the sample, where there's a lot of suspended material that could be mercury rich. So keep the tube upright. You are not trying to drain out all of the water, just the top water. The sample collector recaps the top slowly. This may force out a bit of extra water, that's fine. Where the hole is, wrap Teflon tape several times tightly around the tube, then peel a piece of parafilm from its liner and wrap that tightly around the tube to cover the Teflon. Both the Teflon tape and the parafilm are stretchy. Stretch both when you are wrapping the tube to ensure that the hole is completely sealed. Once both end caps are on and the mini corer is wrapped, the sample does not need to be upright. Put the mini core in the bag it came in. Label the bag with your site name and the date using the Sharpie. Make notes about the sediment on the field sheet. Repeat this in the same area two more times. We want three mini core tubes from your site. Just reach over a little and start again with a new tube and end caps. No need to change gloves in between. Keeping the sediment in the corer is challenging. Here are two alternatives. Put your finger under the mini corer to hold the sediment in. If you cannot keep sediment in the tube, which could happen if it's too sandy or loose, use the small plastic scoop. Scoop the top two centimeters of sediment as best you can. Deposit the scoop full of sediment into a small zipper bag. Put three small zipper bags, each one labeled, of scooped sediment per site in one large bag and don't forget to label it also. Troubleshooting Your water body has nothing but rocks. Lift up a few cobbles of rock gently and see if there's mud or sand underneath and sample that. Make a note or take a picture of how rocky it is. If you are unable to find an area with sediment to sample, Make a note on the data sheet that sediment samples were not taken. Your water body has lots of plants. This happens a lot. We don't want a mess of plant roots in the sample, so you might have to try a few times to get a good mini core. Try to get samples in between the roots. You can remove the depth washer. And look at what you've got in the mini core before you decide to cap it. Are there lots of roots, big plant pieces? Reject that mini core. Dump it back into the water but away from your sampling site. Rinse out the core with stream or lake water and try again. You make a muddy mess of the site before sampling. See if you can wade over a bit and try another spot. Make a note if any of the disturbance seems to affect your samples. Try reaching as far as you can away from your feet to a spot that's less affected. Put the sediment samples on ice until you return to the office or lab or field station wherever there is a freezer. Sediment samples are frozen like the dragonfly samples and shipped on dry ice. They can be kept in the freezer until all your sites are done. Leave no trace. Be sure to collect all of your field gear and remove trash from the sample site before departing. No need to rush back to ship immediately after sampling, unlike the water samples. To ship you will need your samples, your field data sheet, a cooler, your FedEx shipping label, the dry ice label, and clear packing tape. Dry ice and your field coordinator's contact information. Take your samples from the freezer where they have been stored, place them in the cooler with the dry ice, and place the field data sheet in a zipper bag. Seal the bag and place that in the cooler as well. There is a small vent hole in the top of the coolers being used for dry ice shipments. This vent hole must remain open. Do not cover it with the shipping label or packing tape. Seal the cooler with tape. Put the shipping label on the cooler. When shipping samples on dry ice, you must check the dry ice box on the FedEx label. Additionally, the cooler must have the dry ice label included in the sampling kit, affixed with waterproof tape. Because there is not always someone in the lab to accept samples on Saturday or Sunday, and it takes a day to get the samples to the lab, do not ship on Friday. 
Additionally, if something happens to a Thursday shipment, there is no salvaging samples. Therefore, ship your samples on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Contact your coordinator when a shipment is ready to verify that someone is available to accept the shipment. Shipment of coolers should be sent FedEx overnight. Your coordinator will need to know the FedEx tracking number for your cooler. Be ready to give it to him or her. Take to your local FedEx office or arrange for pickup. Contact your field coordinator if you have trouble finding dry ice or have questions about it. If you have any questions about sampling, please contact your project coordinator. Keep things clean, be safe, thank you, and have fun.